Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Chanel Wallet on Chain in the red caviar leather with the silver hardware, perfect for this upcoming holiday. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Uh, starting with the first question from Stacy Redding. Since you have been collecting for 10 plus years, I'm curious, which luxury store slash brand have the best and worst customer service and why? This is a fabulous question. Now, before I get into the good and the bad, um, let me just start by saying that any time that customer service comes up on a topic on Minx Monday, I get a lot of people that tell me that I'm being too harsh. Uh, some people say that I have unrealistic expectations, uh, and that might be the case to a certain extent, but, and maybe I'm such a stickler because I've worked in customer service for so many years, but I feel that when you get great customer service, not only does it enhance the shopping experience, but it's also a direct reflection of the company that you're working for. So I don't care if you're shopping at Target, I don't care if you're shopping at Louis Vuitton, I expect great customer service regardless, and I most certainly expect even better better customer service at some of these luxury stores because of the, the price points, because of the hundreds or thousands of dollars that you're going to be spending when you go there. So for me, the last thing that I want to deal with is with someone that's having a bad day or has a very poor attitude. Maybe I'm being a diva, maybe I'm overreacting, but I told you guys that I'm going to be very honest when it comes to luxury goods, and that's sincerely how I feel about customer service. Uh, all right, so now for the not so good and the best. Let's start off with the not so good so that we can end on a positive note. Uh, all right, so the not so good stores, there's quite a few out there. Uh, I'm not trying to say that every single boutique from these fashion houses that I'm about to mention have the same type of customer service, not at all. There's a lot of sales associates out there that go above and beyond uh, but these just seem to stick out a little bit more than some of the other ones um, and it really pains me to say it and I'm gonna get a lot of hate I'm gonna get a lot of people that disagree with me and that's okay but the first one that I have to mention for not so great customer service is Louis Vuitton and the reason why that is is because I feel that they are so incredibly inconsistent and I feel that that really ends up hurting the fashion house I really wish that all the Louis Vuitton boutiques were as nice and as welcoming as the ones that I often and frequent uh, but that's not always the case you know and uh, sometimes I've gone into boutiques that I don't normally end up shopping at I ask the sales associate a question about a bag or a small leather good or whatever it is and sometimes when I ask them the question they respond by giving me kind of like a blank stare and then like um, oh it's this and they'll just answer that specific question I'm just kind of like okay can you tell me a little bit more information what about this what about that and it's almost like 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 pulling teeth like I have to get the information out and it's just like just tell tell me and I'll be honest it leaves a bad taste in your mouth uh, something else that I find with Louis Vuitton uh, as far as the inconsistency goes is that if you end up asking a sales associate at the boutique something they'll answer you with this if you end up calling customer service they'll answer you with th this other um, you know this other answer that's nowhere near to where what this sales associate said at the boutique so it's all over the place to the point where I feel that it causes doubt and it makes this it makes someone like myself think okay is this person telling the truth is this person telling the truth which one should I go for it's you know it's conflicting information and I don't like that you know it just it makes me kind of just step away all you know all together uh, so I'd have to say Louis Vuitton is definitely one of the ones that has to <laughs> that I feel should take a course in customer service um, another one is Chanel and Chanel sales associates some of them oh man <laughs> I feel that some of them are are on their high horses and when you go in to ask a question now I know that you know whenever you go into any of these boutiques if you have a certain bag in mind or if you have a certain wallet in mind or whatever it is it's I mean it is beneficial to have some information on what it is that you're looking for versus going in there and saying can I take a look at the quilted bag okay well what quilted bag from Chanel you know almost all of them are quilted so it's it's great to have a little bit more information so you can tell the sales associate so they can get exactly what it is that you uh, that you need but sometimes, sometimes I have experienced the sales associates that cannot be bothered to answer questions. They're just so, 
I don't, I don't even know. It's almost like, don't you already know the answer? Why are you even asking me this type of situation? Um, I've had that happen more times than not, more times than not, and it's so frustrating, especially if I, if I'm sincerely there to look at something that I want to purchase, and then the minute that you tell them, oh, I'm just looking, it's like they turn the charm right off. They turn around, and it's just like, oh, they're just looking. They're not going to buy anything. I don't want to waste my time. I'm not saying that that's what happens. So please don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but. It just, I can't, I can't help to, but feel that way, that it's almost like I'm being a nuisance. And I most certainly do not want to feel like a nuisance when I am thinking about spending four or five or six thousand dollars on a handbag. You know what I mean? And with Hermes, I feel like they kind of look you up from top to bottom and they kind of assess the situation and they think, oh, this person's not going to buy anything. Hi, how are you? And that's about as far as the conversation goes, uh, you know, and shame on them, shame on any of these factors fashion houses for judging a book by its cover because um, you never know who's going to walk through those doors. You never know who has money to spend and who doesn't. There's a lot of millionaires. There's a lot of billionaires out there who dress extremely conservatively, who are very, very casual dressers, and you would never even know how much money they have to their name because of the way that they dress. So never judge a book by its cover. And I've said this before, um, Robert has tattoos. He's completely sleeved in tattoos and he's gotten so many dirty looks at some of these high-end boutiques and like I said, I don't, I don't put up with it. I get so irritated. He doesn't. I do because it's just like, why, why, why are you judging someone for what they have on their arms or what they look like? You know what I mean? Uh, so again, I'm not sitting here trying to bad mouth these companies. These are actual experiences that I have had, things that I have dealt with throughout the years of buying luxury goods. I've had some great experiences at Hermes and I've had some great experiences at Chanel as well and at Louis Vuitton, like I said, uh, at the stores that I often go to, but I've also had some that are just kind of all over the place, and it's all about that inconsistency. It's it's just not, it's not straight across the board. Uh, now, when it comes to the best of the best, I only have one item from this fashion house, but every single time I have gone into the store, into this boutique, whether it's in the United States, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in Paris, it doesn't matter where I am, where I am, I get the same treatment every single time and that is Dior. Dior is just absolutely the cream of the crop when it comes to customer service. They know exactly what it's about and I will even go as far as saying that I have had um, I have had experiences where, you know, I give my information to the sales associate. They'll call me two weeks after I've been in the boutique and they'll say, hey, Manny, uh, you came into our boutique, you know, on this date. And uh, I'm just wondering if there's anything that I can do for you. If you're interested in any bag, please don't hesitate to call. Please don't hesitate to reach out. They call you back. They, I mean, I'm, I'm not even buying anything. And they call me back to see if I, if there's anything that I need, you know, just because they pay, it's that small attention to detail. Like I said, when it comes to customer service that I appreciate and Dior is also one of the ones that whether you are going in there just to look around, whether you are going in there to buy, you get the same treatment. They don't turn off the charm. They don't turn around. They don't leave you to your, you know, by yourself. They'll sit there and they'll be so forthcoming with information about the fashion house. They'll tell you about this bag and why it has this hardware why it has this detail, why it has all these other aspects, just to give you more information. And that is what I love. I mentioned it in a, in a week, in a, in a video previously. I am like a sponge. I suck up all of that knowledge and the fact that they are just so welcoming, that they are just so, hey, if there's anything you need, or did you know that this is why we incorporated this? Did you know that this is why this hardware? Let me get you a glass of water. Would you like a glass of champagne? Would you, they, I mean, they are just so incredibly sweet. They're so kind, you know, and it makes it so fun to go into that boutique, whether you're shopping or whether you're looking. So my hat's off to uh, Dior for absolutely just being the best in the business when it comes to customer service. And that really sets them apart from every other fashion house. And I think that all those other fashion houses, uh, while I do love them, they really need to take note of uh, the consistency and the type of attention that Dior gives you. And it's almost to the point where when you're talking to a sales associate at Dior, it's like no one else exists. You're the only one, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and I don't, I don't know what it is. It's fantastic. And they'll introduce you to their managers. They'll introduce you to this other sales associate. It's just, there's so much information. There's so much friendliness going on. You would, you, you literally leave the boutique just 
completely just grinning from ear to ear just because of the fantastic experience. At least that's what I have had uh, in the past. So in my opinion, Dior, hands down, bar none, best of the best when it comes to customer service. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Kawana Smith. How many small leather goods does someone really need? Are we getting spoiled? I remember a time that all I carried was one wallet for cards, change, receipts, and everything, and a toiletry pouch for feminine products. This is a fabulous question, and as someone mentioned in the comments section down below, it is definitely food for thought. Uh, are we getting spoiled? I wouldn't necessarily call it being spoiled. Uh, I know that, for me, it's a little bit more of quality over quantity. Um, once upon a time when I was younger, I've mentioned this before, um, I used to buy, I used to buy just to buy, just to have in my collection with really no rhyme or reason. Uh, and we all know how that turned out. <laughs> uh, the older I get, I see things a little bit differently. Uh, and I most certainly got caught up in the whole whirlwind of luxury goods. Uh, you know, like I said, I just kept buying to buy and there was just like, I, I want to have this, I need to have this, and this mentality, right? Uh, but for me now, I think that I'm a little bit more uh, cautious, I'm a little bit more conscientious as to what I add to my collection, just because I want to make sure that it's something right for me, not for someone else, so not because I want to be labeled as a cool kid, if that makes any sense. And when it comes to luxury goods, I feel that if I'm being responsible, at least in my, in my, uh, in my case, if I'm being responsible in every other aspect of my life, if I am taking care of what needs to be taken care of, and I consider luxury goods um, a hobby, if you will, um, I know it's an expensive hobby, but maybe that's not the right word for it, but, um, you know, no one needs a $3,000 handbag. No one needs a $1,000 handbag. No one needs 20 plus handbags or wallets or an excess of shoes or anything like that, but, it's a hobby nonetheless in that instance, you know what I mean? And I feel that if people end up having hobbies for golfing or for fishing or um, collecting thumbnail or uh, thumbtacks or whatever it is that someone ends up enjoying, then I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't think, um, I don't think we're hurting anybody. And what I especially love about luxury goods is that, I don't even know if I can put it into words, um, so I'm not being very articulate here, but I feel that whenever I come on here, even when I'm sitting here talking to you guys, there's a type of a feeling, there's a type of sensation that I get when it comes to sharing an item with like-minded individuals. You know what I mean? And I know that we have a lot of people in our lives that don't get the luxury goods aspect. They think that we're ridiculous. They think that we're crazy for spending obscene amounts of money on a handbag, or they're just thinking it's just a bag. They're just shoes. It's just a wallet. But Whenever I talk about luxury goods on my channel, whenever I talk to you guys uh, in the comments section or on Instagram or anything like that or in real life, it's almost like we are on an island, you know, by ourselves. We all get it. You know what I mean? There's no judgment. There's no, um, there's no sense of guilt on that island and we're all happy for one another. It's like we're frolicking in the, in the waves of the sea on our own little, um, on our own little island. And... I think it's that sensation. I think it's that kind of camaraderie that we have with each other that really adds to the adds to the overall appeal of luxury goods. At least in my case, like I said, I can't speak for everyone else. Um, but I, like I said, I don't think it's being spoiled. I think if if you have if your heart is singing for something and if it's something that really brings you joy, makes your makes your face. Um, have this enormous smile from ear to ear, then I don't see, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, like I said, we're not hurting anybody. We're just crazy. We're just crazy bag people and we all get each other. <laughs> but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this question. I think it's fantastic. And like I said, I know that it's very easy to get caught up in the world when to try to be one of the cool kids to, to try to, uh, to get this, per you know, to try to get this bag because that person has it. But for me, now it's more so what works for me, not for someone else. I appreciate the reviews and I appreciate the unboxings and I, and I love seeing I candy for you know on other people but until something works out for me and my lifestyle then um you know it's something that i won't end up adding to my collection but i don't know if that's the best answer for the question that's that, i mean that comes straight from the heart i can't really think of anything else and my apologies for not being able to really put it into words but that sense of that sense of that feeling that i can't describe just makes my heart sing 
for the things that make my heart sing, if that makes any sense. Next question from Sydney Rodriguez. Have you ever thought about what your first bags would be if you had to start your collection over again? I thought it might even be cute to make it a tag video. I'd love to see what all you Lux ladies would choose. I feel like there might be a lot of bags out there that are functional and not necessarily favorite. What do you think? Uh, first and foremost, that is an awesome uh, video idea. So thank you so much for the suggestion. And I think that this is a really fun question. Uh, if I had to start my collection all over again, which would be some of the ones that I would start with. Um, to be honest, I would probably have to say that the only difference that I would do uh, is that I would have liked the jumbo and the medium large to have been incorporated into my collection a lot sooner. Uh, the medium large, a lot of you know, it's one of my all-time favorite bags. I end up gravitating towards it uh, more often than any other Chanel bag that I have. Uh, and the jumbo, you know, especially the jumbo, because I got, I, you know, I talked about this last week, you know, keeping your eyes on the prize, and Every time I had the jumbo in mind, it was my holy grail bag, and I would often derail. I would go for a Vuitton, I would go for another Chanel bag, I would do all these other things. So had I kept my eyes on the prize, I would have been able to acquire the bag a lot sooner than when I did end up getting it, and therefore I would have saved a lot more money. <laughs> uh, because when I ended up purchasing it, I believe it was six months prior the price increase had just happened so had i gotten it even a year before that i would have saved those five or six hundred dollars that it went up plus the tax um on top of that so <laughs> for me it would have been the savings the savings on a jumbo compared to when i ended up buying it <laughs> uh but the louis vuitton bags uh that i have in my collection now of course i wouldn't have um you know i don't i call i don't call anything a regret because i feel that it's brought you to the moment that you are you know that you're in now uh, so while I don't regret any of the bags that I had that I had added to my collection and then sold um, I wouldn't change anything when it came to my Louis Vuitton collection because uh, the Neverfulls and my Speedy 35s, I got those around the same time. Uh, and I've had some of my Neverfulls for seven, eight, nine plus years. So I've had them for, for quite some time. Uh, and by getting the 35s, they allowed me to realize that I like the 30s and the 30s that I have in my collection now. I've gotten them at special times, if you will, in my life that I'd like to commemorate, you know, and I wouldn't change that for the world. Uh, so it's a really boring answer, I know, um, but I wouldn't change the Louis Vuitton, uh, the Louis Vuitton pieces that I've gotten in the order that I've gotten in, gotten them in. My goodness. Um, but the jumbo. <laughs> the jumbo for sure, only because of the price and and it's still my holy grail bag even though I don't use it and I end up uh, gravitating more towards the medium large like I mentioned I still absolutely love that bag and um, I consider it a forever piece that I will never part with or I'll pass down to a family member so <laughs> I know how boring right <laughs> Uh, but I just, I like how everything has turned out, but great, great question. Uh, next one from Lux Lab Life. Are there any luxury brands that you would like to expand your collection into, not including Hermes? I feel like a lot of great brands get little recognition in the luxury community solely because of the popularity of Vuitton and Chanel. Uh, great question. I agree with you 100%. Yes, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, and Hermes, these are all great fashion houses, but they are definitely, um, you know, the major players when it comes to luxury goods, and they tend to overshadow some of the other very fabulous uh, brands out there. Uh, there is one fashion house that uh, currently I have a small leather good from them. I used to have a clutch. I ended up selling it only because I didn't uh, use it too often. Uh, but that is Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent to me is just, I love the silhouettes that they have for some of their bags. Some of them might be a little too out there. They might be a little too slouchy for my taste, depending on the on the leather that they have. But in specific, I am a big, big fan of their pebbled leather. I've said this before on my channel. I feel that the pebbled leather is just, it's so incredibly durable. I love the fact that it keeps its shape. And I mean, you can get a pebbled leather piece from Saint Laurent from 10 years ago, and it looks like you got it last week type of thing. Uh, so I just, it's almost, it kind of reminds me of Louis Vuitton's Epi leather. It has that same type of uh, durability and it still has those beautiful pebbles um, for the texture. Uh, and I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of Saint Laurent. Um, 
you know, a lot of people don't like the hardware. They feel that it's too gaudy. For me, I like the whole gaudiness. <laughs> so it's a win-win. But I would like to add either a wallet on chain from the Fashion House or even just a larger uh, a larger bag just because I'm such a fan of them. Uh, and they have great craftsmanship, great quality. And they have, I mean, they have great price points compared to other Fashion Houses. The only bummer is that they don't hold their resale value as well. And they, I feel that the only reason that they don't hold their resale value as well as others is because of of the um you know, because of the popularity of Vuitton, Chanel, and Hermes, as uh, as I mentioned before. Uh, but most definitely, it would have to be uh, Saint Laurent. Another one that I would like to add to my collection at some point in time would be a mulberry bag. Um, I just, I fell in love with them when we were in London. Um, I, I didn't get the chance to go into a boutique, but I saw them everywhere. And I saw how, um, how they were, how people wear them. And I just felt that it was just one of those brands that's so understated, but it has amazing amazing quality so mulberry would be one um, but really those two are the ones that kind of stick out the most over any other fashion house there's also a few other uh, you know brands out there that I like but I would like to add either a Bayswater I think it, I think it's called the Bayswater mulberry bag um, and then the wallet on chain from Saint Laurent just because again the the quality of their leathers and the the silhouettes that they have are definitely something that I can see myself using for quite some time. But great, great question. Next question from Reed Jacob. Hopefully I said that correctly. I was informed by my sales associate at Louis Vuitton that the toiletry pouch 26 will be out of stock in the United States for at least the next three months. I was considering purchasing the Gucci Blue Bloom's large cosmetic case as a substitute for it. What are your thoughts on this Gucci print and do you think it is worth the extra $75 for it? Or should I just stick it out and wait for the toiletry pouch 26 to come back into stock? P.S. I do not own anything Gucci, so I am nervous it won't live up to my Louis Vuitton standards. This is a great question, and to be honest, I feel that Gucci has come a long, long, long way from where it once was maybe 10, 12 years ago. Um, I feel that they have really just revamped the entire brand to do a 180, and uh, a lot of people are saying how, you know, how happy they are with the quality that Gucci has uh, compared to before. Uh, when it comes to the Blooms uh, collection, whether you go for the pink or whether you go for the blue, I think that it's really cute. I think that it's really fun. It's a really great way to add variety to your collection, especially if you're thinking about venturing into a different fashion house from uh, from one of the ones that you normally end up going to, in this case, Louis Vuitton. Uh, the only thing I would have to say is that if you if the Blooms collection makes your heart sing, then go for it. But if the Toiletry Pouch 26 is the one that really just, you know, gets that heart beating faster, then I would end up going for that one. Uh, you know, and especially if you're still a little apprehensive apprehensive about, uh, about Gucci, even though, as I said before, they have really uh, revamped their style. They have really revamped their quality. Uh, but if the toiletry pouch ends up making your heart sing louder than the Blooms collection, that I would end up going for that one. Um, just because, you know, you want to give in to that, to that singing heart. I think both are great. Like I said, going for Gucci is a great way to add variety to your collection, but it's all a matter of which one uh, you really want to add to your collection next. So hopefully that was able to give you a little bit of information. Uh, all right, next one from Miss Pandora. I just bought the Speedy B25 in Damia Bin, and to be honest, I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep it or not. When I compare it to my oldie but goodie Mono Speedy, the quality seems to be in a different level, and this is the reason I'm getting to you. I'm not very happy with the handles. They have some wrinkles slash creases on the inner side. Do you have these in yours? I don't know if I should face this as something normal due to the bending of the leather or if it really is a slight defect. This is a great question and I'm a big fan of Damien Ben. You guys know that it's my all time favorite uh, print. I love how carefree it is, but it is most certainly prone to wrinkling and creasing uh, to the point where it even happens fresh out of the boutique or fresh out of the box. And that's really due to the treated leather, the, the coating that they put on the leather to make it so carefree. Uh, but here I have my Speedy 30 and Damia Ben that I got in London. Uh, and on the inside of the handles, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, probably not. Uh, it has a little bit of wrinkling throughout. Um, it's not too, too noticeable, but if I run my fingers across it, you can really feel kind of little ripples. Uh, but again, it doesn't really bother me just because that's a natural characteristic. That's something that's prone to happen with Damia Ben. But I I wanted to share with you guys the strap on my Keep All 45 bandolier. I got the Keep All 45 bandolier in Damien Ben uh, when we were in Paris, and uh, it had wrinkles. Um, I, I checked it over when I was at the when I was in the hotel. 
and it already had wrinkles and then the moment that I used it I think um, it was it was a small window I mean a small time frame I it was when I packed it up in the bed and then I took it into the cart because we were going on a trip and I used it it already had wrinkles like crazy to the point where you would think that I had the piece for more than you know a few years and not that it was the first the first time that I had used it or its maiden voyage if you will uh, so here is the strap uh, but check out the wrinkling that it has right here all throughout it almost looks like it's I mean you can really see how pronounced the the creasing is uh, it's not bubbling or anything like that but you can really see it on the top of the handle and kind of like what I talked about last week I feel that the pros really outweigh the cons when it comes to Damia Ben for me yes it wrinkles it might not be the most appealing look that it has but the fact that I don't have to worry about uh, water stains the fact that I don't have to worry about anything like that really um, gives me a little bit more peace of mind when I end up using uh, the print but there we go and then on the bottom you can see I have creasing as well I almost hit myself in the face <laughs> uh, it's really difficult to to show this without hitting myself in the face uh, but maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit better maybe not I am failing so badly uh, but check this out uh, here we go do you see this right here it almost looks like it's kind of a little deformed on the side because of the stitching. Uh, I noticed it and it almost looks like it's lifting off. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. Uh, there we go. Maybe. Can you see it? Am I crazy? Uh, but you can you can definitely see it if it was up close. Um, now I have had a lot of people send me messages uh, actually this last week saying that they've gotten some items that are Damia Ben uh, and they have a little bit of bubbling underneath where the stitching is and then that bubbling also ends up turning a little bit. It has like a white residue. Um, in that instance I would feel that it would be a fault, not a faulty, I feel that it would be a defect uh, and that's something that I would always say go into the boutique and uh, ch have your sales associates check it out. Uh, but when it comes to this wrinkling, like I said, it is prone to happen. It doesn't bother me uh, only because of the pros that I mentioned earlier, the fact that it's so carefree and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but it is, I mean, it is very, very noticeable. And the more and more that I use it, the more and more the wrinkling will happen. Uh, I will be the first one to come on here and let you guys know if it starts to crease. Um, just because I feel it's important to share that information as well. But other than that, even with the the deformed stitching that it has on the side. This is like, what am I having such a hard time? My goodness. Oh, I fail. I failed. Uh, even with the stitching that you see right there, um, I haven't had any issues as far as it splitting or anything like that or with the varnish but I just thought I'd share how how you know <laughs> how the wrinkling can get over time I would most definitely uh, recommend going into your local boutique or talking to your sales associate and have them you know take a look over the item maybe it was a uh, quality control issue maybe it was something that needs to be repaired uh, but just to get that peace of mind for yourself as well I would always recommend going into your boutiques even if it's a brand new item even if it's six months old it doesn't matter but just to make sure that it's wearing the way that it should. So hopefully that was able to answer your question and give you a little bit of insight. Uh, all right, next one from Jen Salko. I'm looking for a bag to wear for special occasions, weddings, etc. And there are a few that have caught my eye. I am having such a challenge deciding between them. They are the Chanel wallet on chain, the Dior Diorama wallet on chain, and the Louis Vuitton twist chain wallet. I have seen umpteen reviews on, on Chanel and I know you love yours, but I am still unsure. Can you please offer some advice? What do you think of the twist? Uh, great, great question. And all three of these are fantastic uh, choices. I do have my wallet on chain here, so we have a little bit of eye candy. Uh, and I will end up putting links uh, to the Dior Diorama and to the Louis Vuitton twist chain wallet on the description box below if you want a little bit more. Uh, all right, so a lot of you know I'm a big fan of the wallet on chain. I talk about it as often as I can because I rave about it all the time, and I think it's one of the best pieces, one of the best purchases that I have made from the fashion house. Uh, so I love the fact that it's very easy to transition. Now, when it comes to the Louis Vuitton twist uh, wallet, in general, when it comes to the twist, I'm not, too, I'm not too big of a fan on it. I do appreciate the fact that it keeps its structure. I do appreciate the fact that 
that it has a very uh, a very easy way to get in and out of the bag versus the wallet on chain a lot of people aren't a fan of the wallet on chain because of this little button uh, they feel that it's not um, you know if you want to get in and out of it sometimes you want to make sure that it's snapped closed uh, so I get that aspect of it the Louis Vuitton twist the fact that you're able to just kind of move the letters around and it's secure I think that's a really great feature that it has uh, and I know that right now it's available in the the runway pieces the, the limited edition pieces and it comes in epi leather so the fact that it's epi leather is very uh, it's very durable um, the main reason why I'm not too crazy about the twist, whether it's the larger size or whether it's the wallet on chain, is because of the strap that it has. The strap is very similar to the to the boy to the boy bag. A lot of you know how I feel about the boy bag. It's a great bag, but that chain drives me up the wall. <laughs> so it reminds me of that. Uh, and you can end up using it on your shoulder, or you can use it cross body. Now, even though I love the wallet on chain, as I mentioned, and I just you know gave you my two cents on the Louis Vuitton twist. Twist, when we go into the Dior Diorama wallet on chain, you know, I have to say that it will give the wallet on chain from Chanel a run for its money because the Dior not only has, um, you know, it has a beautiful strap that, that comes with it. It's a detachable strap. So I love that aspect. You can end up making it more of a clutch. It has a lot more uh, credit card slots than the wallet on chain has. And it also has a, a very generous opening. This is about as large as the wallet on chain opens from Chanel. Uh, but the Dior one, it seems to open up a little bit more. The fact that it has more credit card slots, so that way if you end up carrying a little bit more, then that's great. Uh, and they all have pretty much the same type of style. Uh, between the three, I feel that the Louis Vuitton twist would be the most durable because of the leather that it's made from if you end up going for epi. Uh, the wallet on chain is prone to wrinkling, as you guys have seen. Uh, I have wrinkling throughout here because it has thin it has thin leather on the bottom. The Dior also tends to, uh, it, it still holds its shape very well, um, but out of the three, for structure, the Louis Vuitton, for I mean, versatility in general. I love this and I love the Dior because they both, uh, they end up doing the same thing, but I feel that the Dior, because you can detach the strap, and I mean, when you end up, when you end up putting the strap in here and the wallet on chain, it still takes up space in the bag, right? But when you go into the Dior, the fact that you can take it off completely and it'll end up maximizing the space, it'll ma end up maximizing what you end up putting inside of the bag, that brings it to a whole different level. Uh, so between the three, this one has the best resale value, um, but the Dior, just all around, the fact that it is so versatile, you can detach that strap, you can end up using a crossbody on your shoulder, you can use it as a clutch, and the fact that it has just a little bit more space for more items definitely makes it very, very appealing and like I told you guys before, even though I like something and I'm a diehard fan of it, I will always give you my honest opinion on another brand or on another uh, on another piece and I gotta say that Dior Diorama Wallet on Chain gives this one a definite run for its money, you know what I mean? <laughs> so hopefully that was able to help. Uh, and I also like the closure that the Dior has. It's also a lot easier to get in and out uh, because I know that, as I mentioned before, the button on the wallet on chain is not the best. So hopefully that was able to give you a little bit of information and good luck on uh, choosing which one uh, you want to add to your collection next. Uh, next one from Chrissy Kiss Kiss. Is it excessive to have to have Neverfulls in three sizes. I have the GM and Monogram and the Azure and PM and now lusting over an MM in Azure. Uh, is it excessive to have Neverfulls in all three sizes? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Because the way that I see it, you end up incorporating different sizes for different parts or different aspects of your lifestyle. So maybe you want one for school. Maybe you want one for travel. Maybe you only want one for you know, little day trips, and then you want one to just be a little bit more versatile. So, um, it, you know, the Neverfull is such a great silhouette, whether you end up going for the GM, the MM, or the PM, they, it's just a fantastic bag. So I don't blame you for wanting to add, um, you know, all three sizes into your collection, but nope. 
I don't think uh, it's excessive. I don't think it's crazy, and uh, I say go for it. <laughs> and the last question from Maria Moose. Hopefully I said that correctly. Louis Vuitton luggage tags are sometimes hard to buy, but I've seen the special stamp ones that you can get. I have cousins going to Hawaii. How hard will it be to get a luggage tag and a Hawaii stamp? I don't want to ask if it's going to be hard for them. This is an awesome question because I would like to know as well. <laughs> uh, I know that I have had some people say that um, um, they don't that the Hawaii destinations don't have luggage tags on hand some people have said that you have to bring luggage tags from home and uh, then t drop them off at the boutique and then pick them up before you end up leaving um, I've had some people say that because it's such a touristy destination that sometimes they're not able to get them hot stamped and that they don't offer uh, luggage tags in general I would love to know because Robert and I are going to Hawaii to celebrate our 10-year wedding anniversary very very shortly and the first time we were there I didn't get uh, I didn't go to Louis Vuitton I didn't do anything like that so I'm curious because I also would like to add a Hawaii luggage tag uh, to my collection from the destination from when from when I went. I already have one that a sweet, sweet friend of mine gifted me, uh, but I would also like to get one there. So I turn to you guys. I turn to your advice uh, for Maria and myself uh, so that way she can tell her cousins and it's something that I can, uh, I can end up figuring out uh, whenever I end up going. Uh, but I would love to hear your guys' feedback in the comment section down below. Uh, so hopefully we can get some answers. <laughs> uh, all right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday Q and A. I hope you enjoyed it. You had some awesome questions, and hopefully I was able to answer them and give you a little bit of insight. And uh, for this week's lineup, you won't see me tomorrow, uh, but you will see me on Wednesday. Um, I have an unboxing and kind of like a story time Chanel earring fail that I thought that I would talk about. Uh, and I also will be doing um, the first run of the Pochette Matisse the the frequently asked questions uh, something that I talked about a few weeks back some a new series that I wanted to incorporate into my channel so hopefully that goes off uh, without uh, without a hitch um, but uh, I'm looking forward to answering your guys's questions and giving a little bit more um, a little bit more information on the Pochette Matisse and that will either be up on Tuesday or Wednesday I haven't decided or I'm sorry not Tuesday or Wednesday Wednesday or Thursday I haven't decided but thank you guys so so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already and you would like to please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on that red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.